Hello everyone and welcome to the season finale of my Rewind the Year 2013 series where I was rewatching my top 10 series of 2013 and see how I feel about them today. The reason I started this series is because at the moment there's not really anything that just interests me on TV. You know, there will be a show every couple of months that I'm really into, but for the most part, nothing really sticks. And that's because I don't receive those series the same anymore. You know, there's so many tropes that I'm over with that I just cannot deal with. It. Like non sentoko love triangles, for example, where it's clear that those two people I love and the either the male lead or the female lead does not even express any interest in that third person why are we suffering with this love triangle where it's a one-sided thing and picking backing off of that also i just can no longer deal with somebody being hung up on one person and now everybody has to suffer because you just cannot let go like why are you trying to make it seem like there's only this one person in this entire place so you want to tell me years and years will go by, but that one person is just like, I have to have him or her at all costs. A couple of months, okay. One year at most. But years and years, sometimes it's even 10 years, this person is still like, I have to have this, I have to have him or her. How? Also making um, female leads just feel like they're so weak while well, they've been living well up until they met that male lead so why does she need to be saved time and time again she can do it herself you know I, i'm i'm not saying that she cannot get help but it's too much you know the, the balance is definitely not there it's like prince charming and coming for to 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 his damsel in distress aid but how long She's been handling herself fine up until she met you. And now, all of a sudden, she forgot all of her problem-solving skills because there is a male lead to come and save the day each and every time. I just cannot stand it. Also, having an ensemble cast but still not develop characters and have them be there just for the sake of pushing the plot forward. Why or oh why, you know? And because of that, at the moment, I just cannot enjoy myself when I watch those shows. Once I recognize those tropes, I'm like, okay, I'm turned off. And I rather just go back and watch shows that I've seen before because I know that I already like them. So that's why I started this whole thing. So I'm going to check out my top 10 from 2013 to 2021 and see how I feel about it. So my original top 10 is on a screen so you can tell how I felt originally and then I went back and watched the shows on this list and I can tell you things are definitely different. Now that I am um, older and I understand things better, some of those shows hit completely different. Some of the things that I, I was accepting before, I'm now looking with the side eye. So I have divided my just ranking and everything into three categories. One is The Greats. Those are the shows that not only remain amazing, but for some, I even found a new appreciation for. Two is the good. Those ones are right in the middle. Not great, not bad. And then lastly is the disappointments. That's where just everything went left. So first we have the greats. Here there are five shows. First we have Love Destiny. Love Destiny was amazing. And I rewatched that show without subtitles. And for me going back, even though I didn't have any sub, let you know just how entertaining of a show it is. You know, thankfully, there are a lot of forums and everything where you can 
kind of get summaries of the shows and because i've watched a show before i know what was happening um maybe not like all of the dialogues but i knew what was happening most of the time so love destiny was amazing um next we have love is not for sale which was another uh, C drama, which just definitely stands the, the the test of time. I love it. It's really entertaining and it's really addictive. Next, we have a Good Doctor, and for me, Good Doctor is such a staple of Korean dramas for me because it has everything that you could want for. You know, earlier I was complaining about just how some of the characters are not developed; they lack personality and everything. I think Good Doctor is a perfect example of what an ensemble cast should be, you know, because even though we had our male lead and we were following him through his journey and everything, we still knew about everybody else in the hospital. You know, we knew the type of people that they were, their stories and everything, why they act the way they do. And this is what we want. If you are going to have us follow all those different characters, then develop them well. And that's exactly what they did there. The writing is really good. I love the, st the storytelling. I love the growth and just seeing just the main character going through all those different things, adapting to this new environment and um, falling in love. But still, what I really enjoy about the love story in the show is that even though it's an important part of the male lead story, it doesn't take center stage. We still trying to achieve our original goal love is like an added bonus on top of it so we don't get sidetracked by the love um so the love story and now it's all become about him being in love no it's like a parallel thing he has his relationship growing and everything but at the same time we're still pursuing the goal and everything that we set up to do from the very first episode, which I've really enjoyed. And next we have Miss Korea. Now, Miss Korea is a classic for me, but I will do without the misogyny. You know, it's supposed to be a perfect show, but I just could not overlook how women are being treated, written, and some of the dialogues in the show are very problematic. And at times, it felt like this is no longer fiction, it's what the writers believe. Like, the line is really blurred there. But the story is very interesting. The chemistry is off the chain. The acting is really good. There's also a lot of familiar faces in that show as well. Lastly, in that category, we have A Clear Meet Summer Night, which is a really nice show as well. Another one where it's nicely balanced between comedy and a more serious undertone, and I just really enjoy that. And that's it for The Great. Now, next, we have The Good. Like I said, those are the shows that were just okay you know there's nothing crazy about them but at the same time you know i enjoyed myself here we have three shows first we have secret love secret love was my introduction to Ji Sung, and oh my god just the journey he's been on when you compare this project, which was my very first song show that I watched, to everything that is that he has done up to now, think the devil judge, you know, Adamus. It's insane now to see just the growth and the the actor that he became today. He has such a wide range when it comes to his acting and so many different personalities and um characters and just it it's just a, a pleasure to be a fan of someone like this because they really make it worthwhile. Unfortunately, for all of his greatness. 
there was just no chemistry whatsoever with any of the female leads he was involved with in the show, which is what kind of brought the show down for me because the center thing of this whole story, you know, is the love between him and his female lead in the show. And because this is the main thing and they lack so much chemistry, you could not escape it. And some of their interaction felt kind of awkward and it was really difficult to watch. And even though the story was so entertaining, you could not miss just the lack of chemistry here. So that's why it's just in the middle for me, you know. And aside from him and maybe one or two other people the acting was not cutting it as well next we have shining days which this is the type of show where i've watched it and you know nothing really changed i was not crazily excited i was not just disappointed it was okay um and then lastly we have we get married this one started off really strong but around episode 20 like we got into a slump things became so slow and it was a drag to just finish it you know and that's it for the good and then the last category we have the disappointments that's where things just took a turn for the worse first we have jang ok jang living by love this one was just boring that's that's the thing it was boring i had to drop it around episode i think 10 or something like that because i could no longer finish one episode in one sitting like it would take me a week to finish a single episode and there's so many familiar faces in that show that i love so much but I, I could not do it. I had to just, you know, accept the fact that this does not do it for me anymore. And last is Empress Key. And this one hurt me. Because Empress Key, up until that point, was one of my all-time favorite K-drama. And it's been a while, I think around maybe five years since I rewatched it last. And I went into it thinking, you know, this is a staple. This is a, a, a show that I really enjoy. It's going to be amazing. I know it. Oh, I was wrong. From the first episode, I already felt weird. I was like, oh, I don't remember this being that way. But I, I had to drop it by episode 16. I, I was done with it. So many issues. First of all, the first, the first 10 episode could have been just reduced to five it would still have been okay you know um the acting oh god aside from the king of choreo which was my favorite character in this entire show everybody else acting was a struggle like i could not and i was like okay no i cannot do this i didn't even take them seriously and i had to drop it and this hurt me because like i said it used to be one of my favorite of all time when it comes to show so now after rewatching all of the shows this is my new ranking so number one, we have Love, Destiny. This one is just so good. Originally, it was a nine and it's still a nine. It was amazing. Nothing really changed there. Number two is Love is Not for Sale. Um, still an 8.5. Number three is a good doctor now good doctor was originally 9.5 but after rewatching it i just feel like it's like a 8.5 right now that's how i feel about it but it's still really really good four we have miss korea 
which Miss Korea used to be a 7.5 and it is now bumped to an 8. Technically, it is a 10, but like I said, the misogyny it took away two points. So I have to have it as an 8. The Amid Sabonite is now in fifth place where it does it didn't really change because it was a sixth number before and now it's just five so it just got bumped to one spot but still it was a good experience now we have the second half of the stable now we have number six a secret love Secret Love was a 9 and is now a 7.5. And like I said, it's all about the lack of chemistry. 7, we have Shining Days. Still the same. Nothing really changed, you know. It's a cool show, but nothing too crazy. 8 is now We Get Married. Now, We Get Married was initially number 10, but now it's bumped to an 8 because, you know, of everything that happened with the other shows. And now we have number 9, Jung Ok Jung. It was a 7.5. It's now been downgraded to a 5 because the show is just boring. And 10, we have Empress Key. Well, it was a 8.5, but now it is a 5. So that's it for my 2013 series. So the next season of Rewind the Year is going to be focusing on my favorite dramas of 2014. So let's see the list. So, in first, we have Son of the Desert. It is a sea drama that is just amazing. I love that one so much. Um, I remember just feeling bad for the leads because there was a love triangle there in the show. I remember it because... It was done so well. You, you, until the last moment, you didn't know who she was going to choose. And all, both of them had something, you know, that will just make you root for them, even though you know that at the end of the day, she will choose only one person. But uh, I remember it being a very nice love triangle. So I don't know how I'm going to feel after I'm done rewatching it. So, too fated to love you i mean this is such a classic k drama it was one of the best of 2013 like it was everywhere this is one of those shows that was worth the hype another show that was worth the hype was healer oh my god like everybody watched healer when it was out you know it's such a great show Four is a sea drama, The Romance of the Condor Heroes. Um, I really love that show, and I'm wondering how I'm going to feel now. Five, Sword of Legend, another sea drama. And six, we have It's Okay, That Love, um, another interesting show. Seven, Pinocchio. Eight perfect couple, nine the story of a woodcutter and his fairy wife, and ten cunning single lady. So that's the list for 2013, and I'll see where things end up after I'm done rewatching all of the show. Um, if you want to hear my thoughts on all of the different shows that I talk about today for 2013. I have a dedicated playlist for um, this first season and starting really soon, the episodes for the 2024 are going to be out. So that's it for me today. Let me know in the comments what are some of your favorite series of 2013 and, you know, which shows out of the list that I have shown you now for 2014 you think are going to remain the same? And let me know as well what were your favorite shows of 2014 if you remember them. That's it for me today and I'll talk to you really soon.